Hi folks, Gavin from Play TV, and today I'm going to be taking a look at Gigabyte's flagship gaming board, or should I say from Aorus, their gaming brand. This is the Z270X Gaming 9. It has a lot of features, it's got a lot of things going for it. The most biggest thing about it is its price tag, it's around £520 in the UK, so it's not a, not a cheap board by any, any means necessary. But let's explain why it's that price. So it has a four dim design and it supports obviously dual channel DDR4 memory, which is all, Int all Intel Z270 motherboards support dual channel. So even though it has four slots, it's not quad channel. Um, it has up, up to 64 gig of DDR4 memory can be installed up to speeds of 4,133 megahertz. So it supports XMP profiles up to memory of that um, speed, anything higher. Like so the G Skill 4266 may not be compatible, it depends completely on the board itself and the IMC. So, touching more on some of the main features. Now, this particular board does obviously carry extra cost because it does have a top um, water block heatsink made by the guys of EK Water Blocks. Um, it's what they call uh, G Frost, off the top of my head, G Frost. Um, so, kind of like what the Asus Max, like the formula does on the Asus boards, this has a Built-in water block, obviously it's hybrid, so it will be it, it will run absolutely fine if you choose not to um, use water cooling with this board, but obviously the option is there if you want it. Touching on some of the more of the other features as well, it features three NMVE M.2 ports, so you can obviously have three of them. Bearing in mind it will use obviously CPU, CPU lanes, PCI lanes as well, um, and it will disable some of the SATA ports as well if you use all three. Um, it's got support for Intel's Optane, so it's perfect for future proofing if you want to, if you're interested in Intel's Optane, there's a link in the description um, to explain the technology. Um, it has a Creative Sound Blaster ZX RI 120 decibel plus audio chip, so it's got an even beefier upgraded audio than the ALC 1220 onboard. Um, it's got some of the finest onboard audio you'll find on a motherboard. Um, and obviously, if you don't want to get a discrete audio chip or a dedicated graph and um, dedicated audio controller, um, the onboard should deliver enough oomph for you, especially if you're an audiophile. Also features RGB fusion. Now, this is particular motherboard has so much RGB for it. It's got so much RGB. You've got dim slots for RGB, the MOSFET areas RGB, um, all of the PCI lanes, the Time 16 lanes are RGB as well. Um, and obviously on the right hand side of the board there's an RGB strip as well as the heat sinks as well. This is probably the most RGB feature pack board, I uh, apologise for hitting the mic there, feature pack board on the Z270 platform, probably in the world, you know, this is probably the most RGB mother board there is. Obviously, I mentioned it's £520 and what you, you, what you are getting is, you know, you get an EK water block, you're getting you know, all the RGB goodness, and everyone loves RGB these days, don't they? Me included. So, touching more on the form factor. The form factor, it's an E-ATX form factor, so it's not a small, regular ATX size board. So make sure your case can support the size. It's E-ATX. Um, big full tower cases generally have support for E-ATX, but a lot of mid towers don't. So make sure you do, make sure you check before you buy. Um, Touching on PCI lanes, it's got four PCI times 16 slots and four-way SLI and Crossfire is supported. It's one of the only boards to feature four-way, four graphics card lanes. So you can run quad fire or quad SLI. Although the newer G NV the newer NVIDIA graphics cards don't support four-way and three-way. So if you're getting a 10 series card, make sure you know that before you buy. It also has um Two PCI times one slot, so if you did want to get an, an integrated um, RAID controller or not an integrated, a dedicated RAID controller card, dedicated sound card, anything, you can you can plug them in, no problem at all. It's got two RJ45 pots as well, which is the Killer E2500 um, LAN chip. So um, it has got two gigabit ports with Killer, wi um, killer Network and Wi-Fi as well, so it is very network orientated. You should make the most of your network, depending if you've got fiber. Um, obviously, it, it's it swings and roundabouts. Killer um, is a little bit of a fad in my opinion sometimes, but you know, I'll leave it there. Um, in terms of um, storage options, you've got six SATA three ports, 
with support for Z RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5 and RAID 10 arrays. It's got three SATA Express connectors, which is phenomenal. It's got two U.2 ports and it has two M.2 ports. Um, obviously, it's got it supports three PCI SSDs in RAID 0, as I mentioned. But obviously, it only has two M.2 slots. Obviously, you can use the U.2 slots as well. Um, now, the rear I.O. of the board is also feature-packed. It features one PS2 input for a keyboard and mouse, five Gen Gen 3.1, Gen 1 USB 3.1 ports. So it was a mouthful. One USB 3.1 Type C port, one USB 3.1 Type 2 Gen A Type A port. It's got a Display Port input, a HDMI input for onboard graphics, the two RJ45 connectors as I previously mentioned, a SPIDF optical output, and five 3.5 audio jacks for the onboard audio, as well as you know clips for the Wi-Fi antenna. So. Obviously, as you can see, it's a very, 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 very feature-packed board. It is, you know, an absolute quality-looking motherboard. It's obviously got the metal shielding on the PCI Express lanes, like you will find on most Z270 motherboards. Every manufacturer has done it as well. But, obviously, this motherboard is £520 worth of PCB, silicon, and um, copper. Let's find out what's... How, how it performs really and um, I think that's the bread and butter of any review you want to see how it performs there's no point doing a video review if you can't see how it performs so here's our test set up here across the screen you can see how we use what hardware we use to test this board and it's the same for all the Z2 set boards and let's go straight into the benchmarks Boom! So, the Aorus Z270X Gaming 9, how did it perform? Well, in my opinion, it wasn't necessarily the best board, and it wasn't necessarily the worst board. In some of the testing, you know, it produced some really, really good results, but in terms of memory performance, I wasn't exactly impressed. Um, the memory performance, obviously, was lacking behind most of the other boards we've tested, but... That isn't to say the performance in the gaming was bad. The gaming performance was absolutely brilliant. And, you know, it's apples to apples, oranges to oranges. And, you know, in my opinion, the Aorus, well, the Aorus Gaming 9 is a superb board. It's got a lot of superb features. It's superb quality. Um, all the way from the, you know, the EK water blocks, MOSFET block, it covers, not only does it cover the top, but it covers the caps, the MOSFETs. Um, it covers virtually everything on the top board and it's very easy to use and as I said it's hybrid as well so it's a cross um, it's the G-Frost hybrid should I say from EK Waterblocks which is a nice touch a lot of the £520 price tag is going onto this block these blocks are not cheap of course um, in terms of design you know all the way from the uh, different RGB sections which you can customise so you can have you know say the CPU socket green the RAM slots orange you know, you can have the bottom heat sink down here, you know, blue. You can have, you know, this heat sink up here, pink. Um, and this strip down here, which is also LED, um, RGB as well, you can have that a different color. So there is a lot of customization options available on this board and you can have it suited to dependent on your personal style. Personally, you know, RGB is a big thing out at the moment and it's nice to see Gigabyte, or should I say Aorus Gigabyte, the same company, Aorus is the gaming brand if you're unawares. Um, it is really nice to see, you know, that this board has it as you be. In terms of design and looks, it's definitely a winner. It's definitely a 5 out of 5 for looks and design. So I'm giving this board our design award. Um, it's pff, not the best looking board in terms of general general aesthetics. Likes of the Maximus 9 Code from Asus is Republic of Gamers is a very generally good looking board. But this board in 
you know, this board has the design features that I would expect from a top tier board, the um, hybrid water block on the top that adds another element. It can, it can look fantastic in your build, it can look crap if you've not done it properly. So if you're a good water cooler um, and you know your stuff, you're going to make the most of this board. The metal slots on the PCI Express lanes are nice as well. It got all four of them have got that metal shield in. A lot of other brands tend to only shield maybe the top two or the top three. It's nice to see Aorus have, you know, gone the whole hog and made it the four. Um, the bottom heat sink, the nice contrast of white, silver and black is fantastic. The same with, you know, the top up here. The, there is an RGB strip under the Aorus badge here, which, you know, it looks good. So, talking obviously about some of the more other features. The onboard audio, I had a nice test of it with my Bay Dynamic DT770 Pro 80 ohms and it sounded fantastic. It didn't sound as crisp as the likes of my dedicated Asus Zonar STX2 Essence um, but that's like a £180 sound card compared to onboard audio but when you compare it with you know the likes of other onboard audios that have got the basic ALC1220 Realtek chip this, this, this sound blows out the water and it has to be appreciated if you're into if you're into your music, you like good quality gaming audio, then this board has got that. Boom, bang, bang tidy. Two things um, that I like as well. I like the fact that it's got dual LAN ports as well. That can come in real handy. As well as dual U2 ports. It's got two turbo U2 ports as well for storage. As I said, it's also got three SATA Express connectors as well. So literally all your storage options are are covered. You can use RAID 0, 1, 5 and 10 on the SATA ports and you can RAID 0 the, the super speed ports, so the M.2s and the U2 ports as well. So overall, you know, performance is generally good. Uh, memory performance isn't great, but it's still acceptable. Overclocking performance, now I managed to get my chip to 5.2 gigahertz fully stable on this board. It took a little more voltage than, than I needed on the Maximus 9 Apex, um, but it's still a very, very, very decent outing there for Aorus. Um, there is a lot of power phase on this board. It's absolutely chock-a-block with power phase. I did manage to hit 5.3 gigahertz, but like on the Apex, it was still unstable, but 5.2 gigahertz is the crux, and um, for my chip on, but it's stable before the temperatures start going, you know, awry. But yeah, the, um, I do love this board. It's fantastic. Um, in terms of awards, I'm going to give it our gold award. It's not getting platinum today. I do, I do apologize. Um, I just don't think with the memory performance that it gave in our te gave in my testing, should I say, it deserves platinum, but it definitely deserves gold. It is an absolute beast of a board. And if you've got a spare 520 quid that you want to blow on a motherboard and you want to have one of the best, um, especially probably the most feature heavy feature set and especially the, with the best onboard sound on the Z270 platform, then the Aorus Z270X Gaming 9 is a top pick and it's highly recommended. Gets our recommended award, our gold award and our value award. Not value, value, Pfft, cut, cut design award it gets our design award so yeah i'd like to thank you know aurus and gigabyte for sending the gaming nine in it's been an absolute pleasure if you want rgb lighting at its best then this is the board you want so yeah i've been gavin from player tv please leave a like leave a comment leave a dislike if you don't like me i don't care um if is this the kind of board that you'd buy or is there another alternative that you'd recommend? Please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Hit and um, check out the other Z270 motherboard videos that we've previously reviewed and compare them if you want. But yeah, I've been Gavin. Thanks for watching, guys, and ciao for now. Beast board. It's a beast board. Beast board. Beast board. I like my gaming now from all this. Beast board. Beast board. Yeah. Um, no.